Hi everybody, I'm Jeff from Math and Engineering Help Desk and for most of my videos you can't really put a face to the face to the voice, uh, in this case you're going to get one. Um, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because uh, it's the weekend and I actually have something to show you, I'm going to use a whiteboard uh, today, but also I want to uh, come on camera to uh, uh, thank you very much for 500 subscribers here to Math and Engineering Help Desk, uh, about two years worth of uh, uh, videos or so to get here and I'm so happy that I've been able to help many of you with your uh, engineering and math, uh, obviously most of my videos. We're tailored more for engineering most recently we've been doing math because I've been teaching math uh, in, a, in a middle school. So uh, this particular video though is kind of inspired by something different. Uh, once in a while, especially on Facebook, I get posts uh, shared with me by my by people that I'm friends with and uh, they have math problems on there and a lot of times they ask me for insight to them just because of the years of teaching experience I have. So this weekend I saw this problem on, on, on here so I want to make sure we got this on camera, okay? So this particular problem is <clears throat> a simple order of operations problem, all involving fives, three different operations. And let me tell you, these kinds of problems, I see people flip out all the time about the, about the, the answer okay, to this kind of problem. And the reason why they're flipping out is because there's a lot of misconceptions about the order of operations that even people my age and older still mess up. So I'm happy to uh, come on camera, like I said, I wanna talk about some of the most common order of operations misconceptions. And let's start with this bad boy right here, okay? So the problem basically is this. It's five minus five times five plus five, right? So all five, uh, four different, well, actually three different terms, uh, and you'll see why it's three different terms instead of four in just a second. But order of operations basically is going to give you the correct answer when you follow the order of operations properly. And let me tell you some of the answers I saw people come up with. I saw people come up with 25, five, negative five. And the correct answer, well, we'll get to that in a second because obviously the answers I've already said are definitely incorrect and here's why. The order of operations, as you know, uh, most people know it as PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. There's a very common mnemonic called, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, but the biggest problem with using this mnemonic is because it makes people think that there are six steps to the order of operations. You do parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, then subtraction. And that's where people get this problem wrong. They get this problem wrong because they're thinking of it as a six step process instead of what it really is. And this is it. The order of operations is really a four step process. Now, don't get me wrong. Does PEMDAS help? Yes, it does help because it helps you remember the sort of the correct order, but what people mess up is how to apply and how to condense these into four steps. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, obviously this problem doesn't have some of them, but I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples. The P parentheses means that everything that has to happen within parentheses has to happen first before you can do anything else. Generally speaking, when it's numbers, you're gonna get all operations done in parentheses down so you get one number, that way you can drop the parentheses. Obviously introducing algebra into the equation where there's other um, variables involved, that changes things a little bit, but you obviously still would do the same thing of trying to condense it into as few terms, few terms as possible. So parentheses would be first, that would be your first thing, right? Exponents, your second thing, obviously if there's any exponents going on, you would take care of those second which means if there's exponents outside parentheses, you gotta do what's in the parentheses first before you can apply the exponent. Then, this is the confusing part. People think, all right, I'm gonna multiply first, then I'm gonna divide, then I'm gonna add, then I'm gonna subtract. And that's not actually true. You're actually going to multiply and divide left to right first before you would add or subtract, okay? So multiplication and division has to happen as the third step, but they would kind of happen together. And the reason why is because multiplication and division really are the same operation. Multiplication is repeated addition of the same number, whereas division is repeated addition of the same number, but the reciprocal of that. So for example, four divided by four really is four one-fourths, one-fourth being the reciprocal of four. Four divided by, I'm sorry, four times one-fourth would be one, just like four divided by four is also one. So multiplication and division would happen in the third sequence, right? Now in this problem here, there is one multiplication that has to happen, five times five. Five times five really is one term because as by definition, terms are separated by addition or subtraction. So this five times five is really one term, but order of operations says that that would have to happen first. So let's do that. Five times five, what does that mean? That is equal to 25, right? So 25, obviously good to go, right? So now five times five, 25. Now we're left with this. We have five here minus 25 plus five, okay? Now 
Multiplication and division happened. There's nothing left. Now we're down to our three terms that we can add or subtract. So now that right here is the fourth step. And this is, like I said, this is the reason why people get confused all the time about the order of operations. Addition and subtraction, they happen simultaneously left to right. You don't add before you subtract. You don't subtract before you add and like that. You happen to just it's basically by the order of way it's written. Okay. And this is what people, most people in this thread that I posted in and commented in and kind of said most of what I've already said about this video in this video on that thread, most people that think I'm wrong <laughs> are getting this part confused about the order of operations. Addition and subtraction happen simultaneously left to right. They happen as you see them. So in other words, five minus 25 has to happen before you can add five. It's not add the five first and then subtract that from five and get a negative 25. That's wrong. So here's what you gotta do. You gotta do five minus 25 first. Five minus 25 is negative 20. So negative 20 happens here. And then you gotta add five. So negative 20 plus five, that's negative 15. And that's why the answer to this problem is actually negative 15, okay? Because it's the left to right that happens. It's not the order that happens with addition and subtraction. Because again, just like with multiplication and division, addition and subtraction are also opposites. Addition is adding a number. Subtraction is addition of the opposite number, right? So you gotta go with the same thing in the same time, left to right, and that's how that happens, okay? So people mess that up with that. Now, other order of operations misconceptions, my eraser. Other order of operations misconceptions, misconceptions, excuse me, that I see often is this. Let's say we have a fraction like this, three plus five, I know I'm writing it right now, uh, divided by two, right? So this is kind of what I what I sometimes will, will mention to kids, and it doesn't happen too often, but a lot of kids will want to do something different with this before they before they try to you know solve it correctly. Three plus five over two, and I want to kind of point this out. When you have a fraction and you have operations that are happening within you know the fraction bar, top and bottom, you actually would do these operations first because this is kind of like a grouping symbol, right? The way a fraction is written, everything that's on the top is in one group, and everything on the bottom is another group. Okay, so three plus five would actually happen first, even though the division operation comes before in the order of operations, because you treat this like a grouping symbol, that means that you're gonna do three plus five first, and that equals eight, and then you're gonna do eight divided by two, which equals four, okay? My ratio was wet, that's weird. Okay, so anyway, that's one of the things that you also would see sometimes, okay? Another time that you would see that, I wish I had something drier, huh, strange, must be humid down here. All right, another thing that you would have would happen here is sometimes you will see students mess this up too. Three plus two to the third power, right? So a lot of students will sometimes mess this up in that they'll take three plus two first and then make that to the third power. Now, number one, you can't add these two because they're not like terms. Three and two are not like terms. Obviously, you would have to make do the exponent first. Two to the third would have to happen first. That would be eight, and then you'd be able to add three to that and get your 11, right? So order of operations there dictates, obviously, you do the exponents first and then do that, do that within that. Now, I mentioned before with variables, right? Sometimes when you have x squared plus four to the third power, right? I'm not gonna multiply all of this out, but I wanna just point out something here. If you knew what this number was, Order of operations would dictate you would do everything in here first before you apply this exponent, okay? So if you, obviously, without that, you have no choice but to try to, you know, if you need to expand it out and, not, and unfactor it, you'd have to obviously multiply this three times, do three, two foils to get it all done. But let's say you knew what this number was. Let's say this number was three, right? So now it's gonna be three squared plus four to the third power, right? Now here, let me see if I can change my marker. <clears throat> now here, you're gonna do everything in the parentheses first. Three squared would happen first, because, and also within the parentheses, you're still gonna do the order of operations by itself as well. Three squared is nine, plus four is 13. So you would have nine plus four, then you'd have 13. Then once you get that parenthesis down to one number, yeah. that's when you would actually cube it, right? 13 to the third power, that's 169 times 13. That would be approximately, my, my mental math is not good on camera right now, it would be in the 2000s-ish area. Anyway, those are some simple order of operations mistakes that I say, but as I mentioned before, the main reason I started this video in the first place was to get you to realize that sometimes people my age still make mathematical errors and order of operations mistakes, and unfortunately, Daddy? that's something that we, uh, 
you know, have to deal with as math teachers. Anyway, uh, thanks again for 500 subscribers uh, here on uh, on Math and Engineering Help Desk. My kids are hitting the tripod, <laughs> uh, and I want to uh, say thank you very much. And girls, you can say thank you too. Say hi, say hi. Here, hi. I'm bring it down real quick. All right, hi. not in front of the camera. Get over here. Anyway. <laughs> like that. All right, anyway, anyway, thank you very much for 500 subscribers. I, I can't wait to do the next video uh, where I'm on camera, maybe for 1,000 subscribers. Bye-bye. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Take care.